everyone, it's Janet, and today what we're going to be talking about is the new 2019-21 in colors. I told you yesterday in our Facebook Live that I was back, and here I am two days in a row, so hopefully you're not tired of me. So what we're going to again, like I said, look at is the in colors. But before we do that, if this is your very first time here, make sure that you give yourself a shout out, a little bit of love on um, the comment section. If it's your first time here, make sure that you like and follow the page. And then, of course, all of you, if you like watching me when I go live, make sure that you click in the right-hand corner to be notified of when I go live. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to turn the camera around so that you can then go ahead and um, look at these amazing colors. I did showcase them to you yesterday in my unboxing video. And before I get into the colors, I want to show you something that I missed. See if we can get these up in the camera. I mean, who doesn't love bling, right? Look at those. Totally forgot all about those. And for some lucky person who shares this video today, these are going to be yours. They'll go out with a hand stamp card to you. So let's jump right in and let's get to looking at the colors. As a reminder, we have Pretty Peacock. We have Terracotta Tile. We have Roco Rococo Rose. We have, um, oh my God, I got to get these going right. Purple Posy, and then I'm still learning them, guys. Hold on, I'm at Seaside Spray. So Purple Posy, Seaside Spray. Here we have our Pretty Peacock, our Terracotta Tile, and our Rococo Rose. And one of the things I was seeing from some of the comments online was, ooh, they're pretty muted. And I think in a way that's kind of the point. In the last couple of years, we've had some really bold colors, some really bright colors added to the line. When I look at our current in colors, they're almost all primaries. Of course, we went ahead and had our beautiful flirty, flirty flink, flamingo. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, we also had Coastal Cabana, some bright summery colors. Then we went ahead and added our really rich um, spruce, shaded spruce, and then our Merlot. So these definitely are muted and they fill a void that we have in our color families right now. So what I've done is I've pulled some cardstock that people would most likely say, hey, is it close to that? Is it close to this? One thing to remember is that you are seeing these and I'm missing the terracotta. There it is. One of the things to remember is that you are seeing these online because you are seeing these online. There's a lot of factors that can impact how the colors look to you. One, it can be your own graphic screen. It can be whether you're looking at it on your phone, whether you're looking at it on a computer or some other device. In addition, the lighting that's hitting your screen, if you're sitting outside in the bright sunshine, which we don't have any of today, that could impact it. The lighting here in my studio could impact it. So I'm sure that if you compared and contrasted several demonstrators comparison videos of the colors, our colors may look very different, but I'm going to assure you that we all got the same colors. So just something to be aware of. So again, just to show you the colors here on cardstock, Purple Posy, Pretty Peacock, Rococo Rose, Seaside, and Terracotta. So now let's go ahead and let's pull some of our current colors. And I'm gonna set these aside. And for right now, let's start with the terracotta tile. And the one that people were asking is Cajun Craze. Significantly different, but what a pretty color combination. I can't wait to use those um, together. So then let's move that off to the side. This is Calypso Coral. Again, significantly different. This would be more of a, I'd say almost a brighter color. This is more earthy. And then the other one in our family's no, no contrast, night and day. Terracotta tile, pumpkin pie. And then one other I pulled just because, again, it was a question that I got about Flirty Flamingo. So Flirty Flamingo Terracotta Tile. So let me put all of these back together for you. And again, Terracotta Tile is on the bottom. So look how they all kind of fill in. It's definitely a spot that we didn't have in our color family. So Terracotta Tile, Cajun Craze, Calypso Coral, Pumpkin Pie, Flirty Flamingo. So now let's pull Flirty Flamingo back out of the mix for just a second and let me grab our Rococo Rose. I love that name, Rococo Rose. And, oops, not terracotta. We'll hang on to that. We'll bring that back in in a minute. So Rococo Rose, 
There's our flirty flamingo. That's night and day difference, guys. I don't see anything close between those two. And then we're going to bring in Blushing Bride and Petal Pink. Again, Rococo Rose fills a definite void in our color families. There's nothing close to it that we have out there. And just for fun, I put Flirty Flamingo back in there. So again, really, really big void that got that was filled with that Rococo Rose. So, And just for fun... Let me bring the terracotta tile back in. So again, definite, but these colors are gonna work great. So then let's go ahead and bring in our purple posy. And then the two obvious choices to co compare and contrast a purple posy are our Highland Heather and our gorgeous scrape. Now look at that. Where's my purple lovers? Give you guys a bunch of whole hearts out there. Love on yourselves a little bit if you're a purple lover like I am. Look at this. Oh my goodness gracious, guys, aren't you going to be in purple heaven making some gorgeous cards? So again, really, really pretty there. No comparison at all. So then let's take a look first, and I'm going to keep the purple posy here for just a minute. Let's take a look at our seaside spray. And we're actually going to look at a whole bunch of different colors with this. So let's start first with balmy blue. So you can see very different there. This is pool party, not close. Let's take our smoky slate. I pulled some of the grays, the smoky slate and the gray granite because this does have what I would call some gray tones in it. So I pulled that to see what it would look like for you. There is the gray granite. Okay, but ooh, wouldn't that be pretty together? I can see that as a really soft kind of a vintage baby's card. Isn't that gorgeous? Then this is Coastal Cabana. And I know you guys are thinking, why well, are you comparing those? They aren't even close. Just because I want you guys to see where it fits in with the, the other colors in our families right now. So Bermuda Bay. There's our Pacific Point. And again, that's a pretty color combination right there. Then we have our Knight of Navy. This is a gorgeous color combination, guys. It's going to be stunning. I can't wait to do the Magnolia stamp with that. Oh, 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 oh. I pulled mint macaron. I think that's going to be another really pretty combination. And then look at this. Isn't that going to be a fun color combination? Mint, navy, and seaside. How fun is that? And I think I put little stickers on these 8.5 by 11 pieces of cardstock. I think I'm going to go ahead and go back and do that to one sheet of every color because it's fun to sit and compare and contrast like this. And I think in my future videos that I'm doing for you guys here and on YouTube, this will be a great way for the viewers to actually see the colors and then see the name. So I kind of like that happenstance. And then here is Soft Seafoam. Again, another really pretty combination. We can go ahead and bring that navy back in. Isn't that gorgeous? It's going to be so pretty, guys. I mean, lots of pretty color combinations. So that is our Seaside Spray. So let's keep these handy. And... Just real quick, I don't think there was any color here. Posy has just got too much of a purples in it, so it doesn't really need to be compared and contrasted. But again, you're going to start to see some pretty color combinations as we start to work this. So now let's pull in our pretty peacock for just a second. And let's start all over again. So you've got your pretty peacock. And the one color I did not grab was shaded spruce. Um, but it's not even close to shaded spruce. Trust me on that one. Soft sea foam, but again, a pretty color together. And one thing I've noticed about the pretty peacock is that when I place it next to greens, it kind of um, takes on kind of a greenness. When I put it next to blues, kind of takes on a little bit of blues. And then somebody asked about this looking like dapper denim, or um, we used to have another one called night quite, not quite navy. It's probably a blend of the two. The same thing with the seaside spray. A lot of our... Um, Oh, what's the word that I want? Tenured. How's that for a good word? I don't want to say older. Our tenured demonstrators who've been around quite a long time were asking about ballet blue and brocade blue. And this is kind of like a blend of the two. I don't actually have any of those colors here. Um, I'm working from my memory. So maybe that's not a good thing. So pretty peacock. And we've got mint. Again, a pretty color combination. Knight of navy. Here you can really see the difference in the blues there. Pacific Point. And again, remember what we said, we have got bright colors in the line. I did not pull any of the retiring 
colors just because as a demonstrator, this is a business for me. And I do not keep any of the retiring colors around. So for me, matching them to any of the retiring colors doesn't meet my business goals that I have for myself. But if any of you want to see them compared and contrasted to the retiring in colors, just let me know. But Pretty Peacock and Bermuda Bay, they actually look really good together and a little bit better together in front of my eyes than they actually do on the screen there. Coastal Cabana. And then look at this. I think this is really pretty be pretty with the sailboats i love those blues i think it's really really pretty and then again just because we have these colors out let's go for it and let's keep looking we know that they're going to be significantly different there's your balmy blue then we have our pool party smoky slate and gray granite so but again i think this is another pretty color combination I like the muted tones. I like fall colors. But we also, again, have a lot of greats. I mean, all you got to do is look to Blueberry Bushel, Call Me Clover. You know, you look at our pineapple, our lipstick, lots and lots of great stuff there. So now let's take a moment to um, stamp some of these colors. I had them all right here. And to stamp them for you, I went ahead and pulled this stamp set here. It's called Above the Clouds. And I showcased it yesterday, but look at the greetings, guys. We rise by lifting others. Let your dreams soar. Life is a beautiful ride. I love the greetings in here. And multi-stamp, your stamparatus is going to get a good workout from here. Um, but you've got the solid piece and then your choice of two different overlays. Or you could actually even stamp, 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 and then you're going to have a little bit of the extra pieces there. So you could do it as a two-step or three-step. Same thing here. You've got little pieces that work together, banner together as well, too. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna pull this stamp. And then we're gonna, what I wanna do is we're gonna stamp these both on white and vanilla. Because what I found too is that when we're looking at samples and cards online, and I'm noticing I'm getting a little bit of a glare, so I'll make sure when I'm stamping them that I hold them up for you guys. But colors take on a totally different look, whether you're stamping them on white, you're stamping them on vanilla. Um, or you're stamping them direct to cardstock. <clears throat> so I always like to say, don't judge a color till you've given it a chance to prove itself, till you've tried it on those different kinds of colors, um, till you've compared and contrasted it. <clears throat> but a lot of times we're really, really quick to judge and dismiss something as, oh, I don't like that. We've only ever seen it one time online. So we just want to be really, really quick not to judge like that. So i make sure I've got my chamois handy. Yep, it's over here. Okay, so, and my little mat. I'm using a paper piercing mat for those of you that may be new to stamping. Photopolymer stamps get a better um, contact with the paper when you use your paper piercing mat. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna stamp that. And let see here, can you see? Oops, hold on a minute, there you go. Okay, and let me just pull in a piece of vanilla right beside it. And then I'll hold it back up for you guys. And I'm sorry about the light. We have really crazy weather here today. One, one moment the sky is really, really bright. And then the next moment it's dark and overcast. And it's definitely messing with the lighting here. I thought I had it all set for a great presentation, but I apologize. But can you see the difference in how the color looks between vanilla and white? So just an example for you, okay, by stamping like that side by side for you. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look at just a few samples. These aren't anything fancy. They're just some things that I put together really, really fast just to showcase, again, the colors. These are our new laser cut note cards. They actually come in a beautiful tin. They're going to make a great note set. So there you go. You can see the colors, and I'll hold them up to the camera. Isn't that gorgeous? They layer so pretty behind. And you have a nice border here that you can put a little bit of your liquid adhesive there. Let me just hold these up for you guys. Aren't those gorgeous? So, so pretty, guys. Real simple. You might want to just add a little greeting right here on the front. You could also go ahead if you wanted. Of course, we can always get fancy. We can keep things as simple as we want. This is the new lace. And you'll see that on a card. We'll make a card in a minute together. So real simple little note cards just spotlighting the in colors there. So then... What I did for fun, and again, these are real simple cards, is I used two different of the new stamp sets. Do I have them handy beside me? Uh, no, one is with, oh, yeah, I do. Hold on a second. Um, I used Floral Essence 
and then I used Sailing Home. And one of the other things that I want to show you by doing this is that another thing that can impact our decision to like a color or not like a color is actually the image that it's stamped with because it's not how we see that image. So for example, looking at the purple posy, we don't usually think of a lighthouse as posy, you know what I mean, as purple. So when you compare and contrast it, you might not like the color because what you don't like is the lighthouse stamped in that color. Does that make sense? And so I think a lot of times when we judge stuff, we need to kind of ask ourselves why, what is it about it that we don't like? The color combination, the card layout, um, the image in that color. There's lots of things that impact the way that we think about color. So um, just some thoughts for you. And if you happen to have a demonstrator close to you that you can go try these colors and stamp with them, that would be great. I know I have teammates coming over tonight and then on Friday to play with new products so they can see and experience it firsthand. So got to get that rectangle framelit in there. So let me just show you again. Let's just pull, pull these so you can see them all. Oops, wait a minute. Lighthouse is what I want. And you can see a little bit more. And I'm missing one. Which one am I missing? The rose. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. We have five of the colors. And based on what I said to you, which one do you like the best? I mean, I can guarantee for me, I like this one the best. But I'm also a, I don't always think outside the box. To me, apples are green or red. Apples aren't purple, if that makes sense. So lighthouses aren't pink or purple. Although for Mother's Day, I could see um, using this as a Mother's Day card, okay? But again, you've got those different colors for you. So you can kind of just see how, um, first off, you can see that the ink matches the, the cardstock really beautifully. And one of Stampin' Up's hallmarks and one of the things that Stampin' Up does exceptionally well is their color coordination. The coordination of their ink to their paper, to their embellishments, to their markers. We've got some new Stampin' Blends coming. We've got a new set of watercolor pencils coming. And that color coordination is absolutely amazing, guys. So there you can see again that sometimes you might like the color, like when I held this against the other cardstock, but you sure as heck don't like the lighthouse in Purple Posy. Now, some of you may, guys, okay? But I'm just using that just as an example. Um, and I know for myself, there are like first pass, sometimes I don't like things. But then the second pass, I'm like, ooh. Now look what happens when we stamp flowers in that pretty purple pose. And we, so we do something that we think more of flower colors versus non-flower colors, but you can see what happens there. Then something else that starts to make a difference in your projects, and let's work with, um, let's do this one. And I lightly put these together for this reason. So hang on here for just a second. I kind of lightly had them put together just so I could show you something else here. So what I have is I have a memento black pad and I have the image that forms the center of these flowers. And we're just gonna ink that up. And I'm sitting, normally I would be looking straight down over. So if I totally miss the center of a flower, do not laugh out there, guys. And you're gonna notice on this card that there's some lighter features that's what happens when you stamp off. Stamp off is when you take an image, and I'll use the back side of this as an example. Full strength is like this. Without re-inking it, you can um, have a lighter color, and depending on how dark the color is to begin with, you might even get three or four separate shades. So one of the things I like to tell new stampers all the time is start with a dark color. When you're adding colors to your collections, start with the darkest color because you're gonna have the most value in stamping off those colors. So always go for a darker color first when you're building your ink pad collection. So you can see that and that's what happens there. So very quickly using this little piece of paper, I'm gonna, since I stamped off, I'm gonna add that center to all the flowers. And now we're gonna reassemble our card. I'll put the adhesive. You like that boo-boo? Who else has hid um, smudges and inks, right? And now this time, we're gonna go ahead and pop this up. And adding just that little bit of black can change the look of the colors and how you feel about something. 
And so what you pair the colors with, whether you're using them just on their own or what you compare and contrast them to, can make a really big difference. So just some fun stuff for you. So then as a little bonus for you, in my future home of Louisiana, they have this word that I absolutely love. It's called lanyap, and it's spelled L-A-G-N-A-I-P-P-E, lanyap. And one lanyap means it's one of, like I said, my all-time favorite words. It means that little extra. So it's like the baker's dozen where they give you 13. Um, when you go to the store and they give you a little extra scoop of flour, you know, they put a little goodie in your bag, you get a little order. It's got some chocolate or candy. That's lanyap. So we're going to make a card together that has nothing to do with the in colors, but only because I absolutely couldn't resist getting my hands on this stamp. This and inking it up. This is the new Magnolia stamp. And so part of the lanyap is if you do not own the biggest stamp block that Stampin' Up! carries, and I'm sorry that I don't have the number committed to memory or the letter, um, if you're going to be investing in the Magnolia stamp, you're going to want to make sure that you have this big block. It doesn't fit well on any of the other blocks. You're going to need the big background stamp. And then it is fun just to create that random background with it. But what I did is what I have here is I've just stamped one right in the center. And then I just smudged a little bit of the lines. And again, it's a little hard to see on camera. Smudged the lines just a little bit with the blend. And then I die cut. This is our new, can you see the stitch line? There we go. One of our new frames. And the same thing with this little piece. And we have our lace. So let's go ahead and let's put this project together. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put this down across here. And this shape comes, if you look, let me put this back on my hand for a second. If you look at this piece, I cut across the bottom to give me that little bit of a shape. That's something that I wanted. So then we're going to take some tear and tape. I love this stuff. That red line stuff always gummed up the scissors and had an extra expense of having to buy Goo Gone to clean it. I love this stuff. So let's go ahead. I don't have my paper piercing tool in front of me, but I can peel the backing off now that I took my fancy fake nails off. Part of my clean living move. So we're going to take our lace. I'm going to press it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to fold it. I'm going to press it in, fold it back on itself a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating a ruffle, kind of giving it that vintage look. That's kind of what I'm going for. I think the new phrase is that we should say we're giving it the Shelly look. I love the new Shelly paper pumpkin kit that's coming. It's so, so pretty. And it's so her. So let's just cut a little bit off here. And if for some reason your ruffles aren't staying down, you can always then go ahead, and in this case, I will, well, let's just grab old school ways. We're just going to grab a glue dot. You can always take a glue dot any place that you need that little extra and just kind of go up. Like here, these little ruffles are standing straight up at attention. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to just put them down. Let me do one more. And then I have one more really cool thing to show you guys. Something else I couldn't resist doing. So, okay. So we've got all those under there. And then the last thing that we're going to do is take our greeting. We'll pop it up with some dimensionals. Dimensionals, you can never have too many of them. I think you need a ton of them. So we're just going to put our dimensionals on here. And so we've got our dimensionals. And again, I like cards like this that kind of really just highlight um, Stampin' Up's color coordination. So this is soft suede ink, kind of bled out a little bit with the blender pen, soft suede cardstock, very vanilla cardstock, and our new ribbon. So just real simple. The only reason why I wouldn't call this a beginning um, stampers type of card is because we use the Big Shot. And I think anytime you use the Big Shot, um, it gets a little crazy. One thing to note is that these are the new dies. They don't leave, that, at least the first ones that I used, I had no rim. Sometimes you'll get that little extra indentation. They cut really nice, and these worked perfectly with the Big Shot. I did not need to shim. Now, I was using a precision plate, so um, I had really good success cutting with that. Okay, so one more fun thing for you. I want to just show you one other thing I couldn't resist doing. I had to create a new sign 
for the studio. And yesterday you heard me just literally about have a um, heart attack over um, some new paper. I'm just kind of cleaning away because it's a 12 by 12. So that's what I'm doing. You're like, what is she doing? But I have to, um, okay, where did it go? I buried it. Okay. So here is my new frame. How pretty is that? So for those of you that have those machines like the Silhouette or the Cricut that can die cut vinyl, this vinyl is on top of the glass. And then I just simply put the designer paper right behind in that quick and easy. I have a pretty piece of framed art. So, you know, if you, again, if you have a machine like a Silhouette or a Cricut that can cut vinyl, could you see this like with the word family or established 1989 um, welcome to our home, some type of pretty scripture, just all kinds of beautiful things that are on there. So lots of ideas shared for you today. I know that I did a little extra at the end and I hope that everybody's totally okay with a little lanyard. Again, um, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, if this is your first time here, make sure that you like and follow me here on Facebook. I do have two hostess sets that I'm giving away. All you need to do to qualify for that is to comment to share or to simply hit the word replay if you're watching this at a later time and I will be giving those away in four days. So thank you guys for spending a little bit of your afternoon with me. I can't wait to showcase more products with you in the next couple of days, guys. Take care and God bless.